Good morning. I'm glad to be back with you again for story time today. And I hope all of you are doing well. And I miss all of you little ones coming to the bookstore and visiting with us. And I miss the lemonade and cookies too. <laughs> uh, this morning, I'm gonna read um, three books. First, I'm gonna read Owl Babies. And this is a little cute little owl that looks like the owls in our story. So I'm gonna put him right here beside me. And this is a story about three little owl siblings that are really worried about their mama. Their mama, owl, had to leave them for a little while and they were worried that she wasn't going to come back. But mama always comes back when she leaves you for a little while, doesn't she? She always comes back to get her babies. Once there were three baby owls, Sarah, Percy, and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it, and it was their house. And there's their mother right there. You can hardly see her because she kind of blends in with the, the color of the tree. One night they woke up and their mother was gone. Where's mommy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. Here's little Bill. Then they began to talk. The baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. To get us food, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. But their owl mother didn't come. The baby owls came out of their house and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill, because he was the smallest. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. It was dark in the wood, and they had to be brave, for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Bill. I want my, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. They sat and they thought, because all owls think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch together, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. And the baby owls closed their eyes and wished their owl mother would come. And she came, soft and silent. She swooped through the trees to Sarah, Percy, and Bill. Mommy, they cried, and they flapped, and they danced, and they bounced up and down on their branch. They were happy to see their mama, just like you are when she picks you up. What's all the fuss? Their mother asked. You knew I'd come back, the baby owls thought. Hmm, because owls think a lot. I knew it, said Sarah. I knew it, said Percy. I love my mommy, said Bill. They were glad to see their mommy coming home. Now, I have a kind of silly funny book. This next one, I'm sure you've probably heard it before, but it's called Giraffes Can't Dance. 
But I think anyone can dance if you just move around to the music a little bit. Gerald was a tall giraffe whose neck was long and slim, but his knees were awfully crooked and his legs were rather thin. He was very good at standing still and munching shoots of trees, but when he tried to run around, he buckled at the knees. Giraffes run and walk kind of clumsily. Now every year in Africa, they hold the jungle dance where every single animal turns up to skip and prance. And this year when the day arrived, poor Gerald felt so sad because when it came to dancing, he was really very bad. The warthog started waltzing and the rhinos rock and rolled. The lions danced a tango that was elegant and bold. The chimps all did the cha-cha with a very Latin feel and eight baboons then teamed up for a splendid Scottish reel. Gerald swallowed bravely as he walked toward the floor, but the lions saw him coming and soon began to roar. Hey, look at clumsy Gerald. The animals all sneered. Giraffes can't dance, you silly fool. Oh, Gerald, you're so weird. How do you think Gerald felt about all that teasing? Gerald simply froze up. He was rooted to the spot. They're right, he thought, I'm useless. Oh, I feel like such a clot. So he crept off from the dance floor and he started walking home. He had never felt so sad before. So sad and so alone. He's walking home. <laughs> then he found a little clearing and he looked up at the sky. The moon can be so beautiful, he whispered with a sigh. Excuse me, coughed a cricket who'd seen Gerald earlier on. But sometimes when you're different, you just need a different song. Listen to the swaying grass and listen to the trees. To me, the sweetest music is those branches in the breeze. So imagine that the lovely moon is playing just for you. Everything makes music if you really want it to. With that, the cricket smiled and picked up his violin. Look at the crickets. Then Gerald felt his body do the most amazing thing. His hooves had started shuffling, making circles on the ground. His neck was gently swaying and his tail swishing around. Woohoo! He threw his legs out sideways and he swung them everywhere. And he did the backward somersault and leapt up in the air. He's doing all kinds of things. Gerald felt so wonderful. His mouth was wide, open wide. I'm dancing, yes I'm dancing. I am dancing, Gerald cried. Then one by one, each animal who had been there at the dance arrived while Gerald boogied on and watched him quite entranced. They shouted, it's a miracle. We must be in a dream. Gerald's the best dancer we have ever seen. How did you learn to dance like that? Please, Gerald, tell us how. But Gerald simply twirled around and finished with a bow. He raised his head up and looked up at the moon and stars above. We all can dance, he said, when we find music that we love. So Gerald learned to dance. Now, 
This book is called I, called I Love You, The Purplest. And it's about these two little boys and their mom. And each one wanted to be the favorite and the best and the one that mom loved the most. But as we know, moms love all their children the most. There's not one that they love more. So she um, shows these boys every day how much she loves each one the same. Early in the evening, the brothers and their mama finish supper in the in the stud in the sturdy red cabin and set out to fish. The moon glowed on one side of the lake while the summer sun shimmered on the other. This was the time when fishing was the best. The illustrations in this book are beautiful. Julian scooped up the dirt to find the fattest worms, and Max flung dirt in the air until a tangle of worms filled his can. Mama, who has the most worms? She, he asked. Mama smiled. Max, your can is full of the liveliest, wiggliest worms. And Julian, yours has the juiciest worms. Max, Julian, and Mama stepped into the small wooden boat. Julian took an oar and Max took the other. See, they have their life jackets on and Mom does too. Julian planted his blue boots wide and took deep, even strokes, and Max braced his red boots against the ribs of the boat and stroked quickly through the water. Julian gasped, Mama, who's the best rower? Mama's eyes grew soft, while Julian, you took the deepest strokes, and Max, your strokes were the fastest. The three fished until stars sprinkled the sky and the water turned dark as night. And in the end, Mom caught one fish, Julian caught one fish, and Max caught three. I'm the best fisherman, said Max, hoisting his fish in the air. Julian pushed his hat brim low on his face Three fish, what a bountiful fisherman you are, said Mama. And Julian, you're the cleverest. Your fish hid in the weeds, but you waited and reeled in a fine, fat fish. When the fishing and baths and stories were done, Mom tucked the brothers into bed. Mama, whispered Julian, who do you love the best? Mama thought for a minute, and then she whispered, Why, Julian, I love you the bluest. I love you the color of a dragonfly at the tip of its wing. I love you the color of a cave in its deepest hidden part, where grizzly bears and bats curl up until night. The splash of a waterfall and the hush of a whisper. <sighs> The breath in Julian's chest grew and grew. Then it came out in a long, velvety sigh. Mama crouched low to the bunk where Max slept. Mama, whispered Max, who do you love the best? Why, Max, I love you the reddest. I love you the color of the sky before it blazes into night. I love you the color of the leopard's eyes. When it prowls through the jungle and the color of a campfire at the edge of the flame. The swirl of a magic cape and the thunder of a shout. The smile on Max's face grew and grew and then it came out in a big thundery laugh. Later in the evening, the brothers and their mama slept one in the top bunk, 
glowing like the evening moon and one in the bottom bunk shimmering like the evening sun and mama in the big bed dreaming of the boys she loved the best. I love you the purplest is the name of this story because when you mix I love you the reddest and I love you the bluest you get purple. Red and blue make purple. So thank you for being such good listeners this morning and we will see you again next Friday.